Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the February 2v2 tournament, February 2019 2v2 tournament. We're going to be starting with Jasper and Flores versus Anarchid and Hokomoko, and they have decided to play on Violence. I mean, the map choices were Shifting Sands, Hide and Seek, and Violence. So, Hide and Seek was removed because I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, it's a pretty map, but oh boy, is that a map that can take a long time and is very particular in how you play it. Whereas. I mean, Shifting Sands and Violence, that's a little bit more normal, I guess. So, I don't know. It's one of those things I'm not really sure how to how to approach it. But I think Shifting Sands probably is probably what we're going to see from most of the games. However, right now we are seeing Violence. So, hey, Lava for the first time in a tournament. Kind of surprisingly, actually. But yeah, there it is. Violence with all the lava. This is actually a a free-for-all map. Or at least initially. However, that does mean that the players starting out as 2v2 are going to be starting in really weird positions. Because basically we have Anarchid and Hokomoko starting out right next to Jasper and Flores. But you have the entire other side of the map you can work with. But otherwise, yeah, their starting locations are pretty much adjacent. That's going to be tricky. Or fun, depending on how you look at it. It's like, it's right there. It's right there. So yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work. I expect it will lead to a fairly quick game. But it might take a while. It might actually defend to the side and then just expand along the entire rest of the map. Go the entire other direction. I don't know if these are shuffled. I mean, they might be. I just don't know whether or not they are. So someone actually need to check it to let me know what I'm not shuffle, because I don't play FFA maps very often, especially not FFA maps as other teams. I think there is some kind of shuffling that's supposed to happen. But at any rate, the teams have ended up adjacent. So no matter what has happened with the code, this is the result. Anyway, Jasper going for Ampots, Flores for Cloakies, while Anarchid goes for Rovers, and Hokumoko for Air. And looks like, I guess, okay, it must be shuffled. Because, or at least... Anarchy doesn't know one way or the other, so we are seeing quite a bit of spreading out. Darts is going out and scouting the map, seeing what the heck's going on. And Hokomoko with planes, cranes coming in over to this expansion, which is actually really smart right off the bat. Clearly, Hokomoko has played this map enough. Like they know, oh yeah, you gotta get air, because you gotta get to these giant four metal expansions that are gonna be completely unusable and completely unharassable unless their opponents go for air as well. Yep, yeah, Flores does manage to find the Metal Extractor right off the bat. Although I do like the way that the GBC has decided to split up their setup. Because they've split up... They haven't started all in that one little alcove. They've decided to split off. And then from there, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to defend themselves. I mean, they can use that as a wall between the two players. They don't have to worry about everything getting spotted all at once. They don't worry about getting bombed out just right off one shot, like from Revenants or something like that. Immediately getting all the production. At the same time, though, it does mean their production's a little bit less well constructed, but... Or, sorry, a little less well defended. But, hey, who cares? They have a bunch of expansions all in the back that they can just take. And they don't have to worry about anything. Like, all this stuff is theirs. So, yeah, GBC should be getting way ahead really quickly, but at the same time, Team Jasper, they're expanding rapidly along the ground. Because that is one thing, is that GBC hasn't built a lot of workers, and they're primarily focusing on building the back lines. And so a lot of time is being spent going between expansions. But again, later in the game, this will help just because it's going to be a lot harder for the GBC to harass Team Jasper's expansions. Sorry, Team Jasper to harass GBC's expansions. But Team Jasper is getting them a lot faster. I'm actually kind of curious. I don't want this anymore. I'm actually kind of curious what is going to happen here because there isn't any rush happening. Like... We aren't seeing Team Jasper decide to go in and attack the GBC right away. And GBC looks like they are trying to build up a little bit of attack force to try to get in. Especially with all the hack shots coming from Flores. Those kind of make sense with the air force coming in, especially if any Ravens do come in. But that's not what's happening. Right now we're just seeing a lot of cranes and swifts primarily being used to set up this economy as quickly as possible. And again, the GBC remains behind economically for the simple reason that they aren't really expanding along the ground that quickly. I mean, right now, it looks like they're much more focused on building up defenses than they are about building up economy. Which could bite them. Again, at this point, Team Jasper is ahead when it comes to economy, but it's not by much. And also, GBC is essentially unharassable. Team Jasper already losing a bit of the front lines to the Spencer, 
And what is coming in as a counterforce? Gremlins. I think Floris is a little bit too focused in the air. But at the same time, they do have Jasper coming in here. And they are coming up to Scallops. So at the very least, Scallops will be able to help take out some of this stuff. But quite frankly, I'm not sure it'll be able to take out all of it. Because one Scallop against even four, five Scorchers. Well, even three or four is going to be death for the Scorchers. But, sorry, death for the Scallop. But it's my hard to tell. It looks like Floris is deciding, you know what? Screw it. Building a wall. Or building a small hill that can't easily be dealt with. But yeah, Scallop goes down. Floris, at the very least, is able to slow down some of the vehicles coming into the base. But again, there's no defenses. There's just a hacksaw on the commander. That's it. And the commander is going to be completely torn apart by all these Scorchers. Again, right next to the commander. And that is a dead commander four minutes into the game. Already, this entire north side has been completely destroyed. There is no defense here at all. Looks like so we're getting a Thunderbird that's going to come in here and just basically wipe out anything that tries to come in and defend at the last second. And then from there, it's just the Fencers and Scorchers wiping out everything else that's left. Hell, a dart coming in, destroying everything else that's left over to the north side. We are seeing Scallops trying desperately to defend along with the Reaver, but again, the Fences are already in place. Reavers are not going to do the trick. Riots, in general, are not going to do the trick. I don't see how this is going to work out in any way but death for Team Jasper. And they've already gone down one, so this is going to be a bit brutal. But it does look like we are going to be seeing... Well, Thunderbird coming in here, and that's even worse. I mean, the expansions that were coming in the center that were giving Team Jasper all the economy they needed, well, that's kind of moot now. I mean, we have, we have the GBC having already taken most of these metal extractors over on the side. I, there's no way to stop that. Team Jasper kind of lost their opportunity. I kind of su I'm surprised they didn't go to rush, just considering they knew their opponents were building out in the sides. They knew that these metal extractors were being taken. They knew they that nothing could really be done to harass the GBC's metal extractors. I'm just surprised Team Jasper didn't decide. Okay, well, forget it. It's now or never. We have to push. And instead, got really worried about air and anti-air and continued to expand, despite the fact that whatever expansion advantage they might have had, essentially capped out about 30 metal per second just the way the map is built. And just the fact that there was nothing really contesting the outside ring. So at this point, it's basically just a slow crawl as GBC just wipes out... I mean, a slow crawl, just... GBC just destroying everything. Not even a crawl. It's just... It's just a massacre. This entire area here between the two bases has become no man's land, unsurprisingly. And even the center is just not holding. So at this point, there's really nothing that Team Jasper has other than some reclaim that will allow them to contest the GBC. That being said, there actually is a lot of construction going on on the side of the map. Jasper is still sending their commander around, expanding as much as they can. The GBC is fully aware of this, but at least Team Jasper is not throwing in the talc quite yet. And also, to be fair, the GBC doesn't have very much energy either. So while they do have a huge amount of metal, they aren't able to actually spend it all. They actually have a lot of characters. So this, this excess is a bit of an opening for Team Jasper to get in here. But I don't know that Team Jasper is going to be able to do so. They primarily focus on anti-air. They do have this Grizzly. That's a thing. But again, fences are already up for that. So it's hard to actually use that to help deal with this stuff. And again, any forces that try to harass will be taken out by Thunderbirds. So again, justified anti-air. But it's also going to be very difficult to actually deal with that. Especially the anti-air is being torn apart by all the Scorchers having been spotted. I mean, just bait it out. Get an air unit in there. Force the Gremlin to show itself. Then come in with Scorchers to wipe them out. Not much to be said there, but still, this Grizzly is a bit of hope for Team Jasper. That and the fact that they are expanding quite heavily. So if that Grizzly is able to come in and start wiping stuff out, it'll work well. And actually, if if there ever is an air switch or a gunship switch, something that allows for Team Jasper to come in and actually take out these outside expansions, then there is some hope. These outside expansions are not at all defended. I mean, granted, there are Swifts, and those have to be dealt with, but still... Apart from the Swifts, of which there's like, what, three? Just the one! Just the one! Actually, no, this is totally doable. I mean, of course, it requires the fact that it requires them to defend themselves long enough. They, they're losing the Grizzly. So, yeah, that's not going to work. And I think the loss of the Grizzly is going to be the thing that breaks them. I mean, Team Jasper is really trying. They're really pushing. But unfortunately, Team GBC, they're getting their energy up and they're getting their production up. And sooner or later, Team GBC is going to be able to, or the GBC is going to be able to use all of that metal. And at this point, they're already using almost twice as much metal as their opponents. Yeah, there's a lot of... There is a lot of excess, but GBC has also been really good about attrition. And if you look at the numbers right now, it's... Oops, it's still going to be massively, massively in favor of GBC. Although army value largely was even because of the Grizzly... 
Losing the Grizzly was a major blow. Another Grizzly has popped up. This will start to even out the army value, but again, it's entirely concentrated in that one Grizzly. And quite frankly, I'm surprised we aren't seeing attempts at factory switches, something to try to break some of the economy over the sides or over in the front here, because at this point, GBC, they've expanded on the land as well as around the sides, and they've just torn apart everything. Team Jasper can't really expand any further, not for free at least. And the amount of defenses that have been set up over along GBC's mainland expansions, that is also intimidating enough that Team Jasper really has no easy way in. Not to mention the Dante coming in. I mean, if nothing else was going to try to break through this and force Team Jasper to throw in the towel, it'll be this Dante. Because quite frankly, the Dante right now is enough firepower, more than enough firepower to break, break through anything that's been built so far. Really, team, the GVC could just walk in. There is nothing that'll stop it. The Grizzly is going to try to walk in, do some damage, but honestly, the faster this Dante gets in here and starts tearing things apart, the better. Team Jasper does have that Grizzly, though. That is still going to be some damage, but Je the Dante's got 11,000 HP. Grizzlies deal 15,000 damage a shot. Like, yeah, it's a lot of damage, but it's still only 15,000 a shot. It deals like one-eighth of their health. So, two Grizzlies coming in here. No, really one Grizzly. Eight shots for the Dante. The Dante, on the other hand, is dealing what? You have actually quite a lot of weapons coming in here. But not including the D-Gun. You have 1,000 DPS, or a little over 1,100 DPS on top of the Thunderbird coming in here. Now, granted, heat rares require proximity, but the Thunderbird coming in here, it's just not even in a contest. The second Grizzly isn't even going to be up in time. The Scorch is coming in, wiping out, tearing apart the factory, and the south side is going to be completely wiped out for her Team Jasper's base as the Nor Dante tears apart in the north end. And that should be game. There should be a towel throw any second now. I'm honestly kind of surprised we aren't seeing that. It is still tournament, I realize. And we do have a commander over here in the southeast, which I guess Jasper's going to try to build up something with that. But right now, I don't see anything they could build up. All the production's been gone. All the economy is gone. Flores going to resign, and that is going to be it. GBC taking yet another game. Look at the bracket. That puts them up to a 2-0, oh, I believe. Double check the standings, and... Oh, my bad. Looks like... Yeah, Anakin Hokomoko. No, Anakin Hokomoko actually lost the first game. My, my mistake. Sorry, Jasmine Flores also lost the first game. Yeah, Anakin Hokomoko. Now they're 1-1, one and, one, and Jasmine Flores are now 0-2. Oh but hey, there's still three more matches left, so there's still time to redeem themselves. It's going to be a little bit tricky with being 0-2. Oh the, the best they can hope for is 3-2. And, and if anyone's undefeated, then it's not going to be really possible. And at this point, Diamond and Sparkles, we go to the... Go to the brackets. We'll see Dimefront and Sparkles have actually taken their own match as well. So, Malak and Petrodal down to 0 2 as well. While Dimefront and Sparkles are completely undefeated. Top Cat North Chilean G were against 400 men 12. And I don't know how that's going right now. It might be still ongoing. It might be. Okay, looks like we're on to round three. We're not sure who won. But yeah, it looks like this going. Oh. Okay, I'm not really sure what people went on as far as maps of the other two. I'm a little curious, but whatever. Anyway, we're on to round three. So round three is going to be... I'll start in a sec. I'll start once we get things going. So yeah, small intermission as we wait for round three to get properly started up. 